afternoon, you two pipe smokers. Another night drive. Can't see me too good. Not raining. Shut off the wipers. <clears throat> anyway, sometimes you see another YouTube video and it sparks your own uh, ideas. And Eric, the blue collar piper, he posted why he started to smoke a pipe. And I thought that would be a good subject to touch upon. I'm here, you just can't see me. <laughs> and um, most of you know the story I told about cigars. I used to come home from work, cut the grass, and the mosquitoes used to bite me bad. So I figured mosquitoes don't like smoke, so I'd buy some cigars and cut the lawn and it worked. I wouldn't get bit by the mosquitoes. Then I happened to go to a friend's barbecue and he turned me on to real cigars. I was buying these paper ones and I didn't know there was a real leaf cigar. So of course once I had that it was like a different world. They were very good. So I started buying cigars. Now back then, we're talking, this is a long time ago already, about 20 years or more. <clears throat> the closest place to get cigars was about a half hour away from me. And there was a smoke shop up in this little town, and a really nice smoke shop, a small store. It was like a newspaper stand, a smoke shop. He had coffee there. I don't think he had ro butter rolls or nothing. He had like packaged cakes, like a coffee cake type of thing. And he had a walk-in humidor. So I started going there and buying cigars. And where you would check out, he had a glass countertop. And in that glass, counter was pipes. So I was intrigued by the pipes and one day I bought one. And he had a bunch of different tobaccos and I bought some tobacco and now interesting enough I never came across a filtered pipe back then. So of course I take this new pipe home, pack the bowl and in short order, I'm smoking it, and by the next day, my tongue is killing me. So I don't give up, I keep trying. I still smoke cigars when I cut the grass. And I would go back up on the weekend to the cigar store. So I sort of got friendly with the guy, and uh, he turned me on, I told him what was happening, he says, well, you're probably smoking too fast and blah, 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 but why don't you try these system pipes? So I got hooked on this system pipe, because that seemed to solve the issue, and uh, I was a big fan, still am, of the Gerstner, I call it Gerstner, I think it's Gerstner, uh, system pipes, and it's aircraft aluminum, and with wood bowl, or they had even corn cob bowls back then to screw on. And during the smoke, you would release this valve, pull it out, and all the moisture would come out, and you would get a dry smoke. <coughs> so I still had this love-hate relationship with the pipe, and on and off I would continue to try and try all different tobaccos and on and on and on. And I continued to buy uh, system pipes. I had all of the line that they offered. So basically, I put it aside and I continued smoking the cigars or cutting the grass. And I got to liking that, I was smoking a cigar, 
while barbecuing or if I'm outside working, and uh, I really developed an enjoyment for that. And the pipe sort of took a back seat. So now we fast forward to maybe a year ago or so, and I stumbled on a YouTube video. I can't remember whose it was. Um, but probably matches, if I had to guess. I think it was. And it sparked my interest again. So, believe it or not, I still had, and I'm missing some, many of my old pipes. <coughs> so I broke them out, and I decided to revisit this. Now, why I smoke a pipe... I didn't say that yet, but I think it's one of the last few manly things you can do. Now, I don't want to insult anybody. I know there's women that smoke pipes and cigars, and I don't mean it to sound uh, chauvinistic or anything, but... For the most part, I think we can all agree, and they, a woman would probably agree also, it's a man's... Uh, if, you, if you were to think of a pipe smoker, you'd probably see, see a picture of a man before you would think of a, a woman. So... To me, it's something that men used to do. They'd eat dinner, and after dinner, they'll have a sit in their easy chair, their favorite chair, and maybe have a sip of uh, bourbon or scotch or whiskey and smoke a pipe or a cigar. It was just, that was sort of like, probably back in the day, 90% of men, maybe more, did that. And there's something warm and soothing about that thought, that, that vision. And in some ways, I think that tradition should carry on. Um, it's like very identifiable to relaxation and being a man. Um, I know that may sound corny, but It's not that like you have to prove you're a man to anybody, but it's like the few left manly things to define a man left. And upholding that tradition. And I and I do I can't help but wonder or maybe wonder's not the word, or marvel at the relaxation a pipe gives you. And I like the whole art form of it, the, the, the pipe itself, the, usually the leather bag or the leather tobacco pouch. That type of thing. And the whole thought of having a, a sip of high-end scotch or whiskey or bourbon, whatever your preference, <coughs> and sitting down and relaxing with a pipe of your favorite tobacco and just being at one with the pipe and that drink and relaxing in the chair, there's something very magical about it. And I envision this warm type of environment, warm, relaxing, comfortable scenario. Uh, 
as you're smoking a pipe. And cigar, you still get, you have that same type of, now cigarettes never did it for me, I never smoked, I tried cigarettes, they just never did anything for me, I never got anything out of it. Um, plus, none of my friends smoke, that's probably why I don't, I never smoked a cigarette. <laughs> so that's why I smoke a pipe. I think it's uh, preserving some type of, not some type, preserving a, a tradition that's forgotten and, and gone and I want it to continue to live on. And eventually it probably will die off. The way things are going. Um, but who knows, there may be always a small group. If you judge it by pipe shows you go to, I mean the pipe show is crowded, there's a lot of people there, and a lot of young people. So, there may be something that lives on for many years to come. It may be harder to get tobacco. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, and it, here's a really interesting note to all of this. So this cigar store, smoke shop. It was called United Smoke Shop, by the way, Rhinebeck, New York. It's gone now. So I used to go to the smoke shop quite frequently. I bought the tobacco, cigars, and pipes there. And the house I lived in at the time, I don't no longer live there, we had a, a, a two-family house. We had a little apartment downstairs that we rented. And we rented it to this couple. So one day, <coughs> excuse me, still battling a cold. The girl had problem with a car or something. I forget the scenario. And I got to talking to her. And she mentioned something about her father. And turns out, and this blew me away, her father was the guy that owned the smoke shop that I used to go to. <laughs> when you think about the chances of that. And I was like, unbelievable, I couldn't believe that. Unfortunately, when he sold the smoke shop to another guy, that guy just ran it into the ground. I don't know what he was thinking. He got rid of the pipes in short order. He kept the humidor for a while. And once the pipes were gone, I never really went back. And I passed by there a couple of years ago, and now it's a uh, little cafe type store now. Real shame. It was a really nice, all wood floors and wood cabinets. Very small. This, this, the store was small. He had a lot of stuff in it. <coughs> and he had a fair selection of pipes. And he used to um, restore pipes himself. And sanitize them and clean them. He did a really nice job because any pipes he sold were really impeccable. And he had many new pipes as well. Um, and it seemed every week, you know, so at one point I was there almost weekly, uh, he'd get new pipes in. So I guess it was as he was working on them and he cleaned them up, he put them on display. <coughs> A really uh, interesting uh, 
I, I wish the store was still there. Now we have what they call these smokes for less. They're basically uh, lottery lounges, I call them. Uh, they have walk-in humidor. The cigar selection is pretty good, actually. Very little pipe stuff. Uh, they have the common pipe tobacco. Uh, you get Captain Black there. Uh, Prince Albert. Once in a while, I have some Peterson tins, um, but that's about it. Nothing higher end. They have some pipes, very few filtered pipes. And oddly enough, uh, I go in there, I don't know, at least once a month. I never caught anybody smoking a pipe in there. Cigars, yes. As a matter of fact, there's a little cigar club they have with a nice lounge with leather chairs and everything. Um, but no liquor. In Vegas, they had a beautiful uh, Monte Cristo cigar bar. That was nice. All leather seats. You could have a drink and a cigar. All TVs all around. Unfortunately, this place, I don't think they have, they don't have liquor here. Um, they do have the nice leather chairs, smoking chairs, and pretty good ventilation system. But the lottery part of it is uh, depressing to me. Because you see these older people probably using their social security check, chain smoking, watching the quick draw screen, and it's like a, just a turn off to me. I feel sorry for them. You know, they created these gamblers that, you know, everybody's hoping to hit the big one. Anyway, that's my story. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.